My name is Dan Acheson, and I'm a research scientist at the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics and the Donders Institute for Brain Cognition and Behavior in Nijmegen, the Netherlands. This video is about how to perform an EEG experiment. Before we do anything, we get an informed consent form from the participant. This consent form indicates that participants have been fully informed as to the purpose of the study, that we, the researchers, will keep their data anonymous, and importantly, that the participant can withdraw from the study at any time without any repercussions. EEG involves recording electrical potentials from the scalp, and as a result, there's a number of different pieces of special equipment that we need. Uh, on the left, you see uh, EEG electrodes and the cap that we'll use to put those electrodes on the person's head. Uh, in order to get a good signal from the scalp, we need to use a conductive gel. This is essentially a jelly that has a lot of salt in it. Uh, that is placed inside syringes, and as you'll see in a moment, we use those syringes to fill each of those electrodes and make sure that they have good contact with the scalp. Electrode stickers are used in some cases for, uh, to put on, for instance, uh, an electrode below the eye. Uh, in order to put that on and get good signal, we use rubbing alcohol and cotton swabs to clean the skin. As you'll see in just a moment, in order to make sure that we have good signal with the scalp, we'll measure the impedance of the electrodes to make sure that they are sending the proper signal. We record EEG from a control room that is independent of the room where the actual EEG recording is going on. Here we have equipment such as a computer that shows us the raw data as it's being collected, another computer for showing us uh, what the subject is doing, and a third computer which is displaying the experimental stimuli to the participant. In here as well, uh, is a microphone that we can use to speak to the participant while they're being recorded, as well as other equipment for sending audio and video information into the room and receiving it as well. The recording room itself is actually relatively simple, and one thing that you can't tell just by looking at this picture is that it's magnetically shielded. Because the signals that we're recording from the scalp are so small, they're susceptible to environmental artifacts, and that's why we use this kind of room. You can see in this case we have a computer monitor for displaying stimuli, as well as speakers for playing any sounds we might want to have, a microphone for recording any spoken responses that the participant says, and here a button box for recording their responses as well. Once the subject is signed the consent form, we go ahead and put on the electrode cap. Different subjects have different sized heads, and as a result we use different sized caps. And the important thing is that the electrodes are in the same relative position for each subject. In order to make sure this happens, we use four different landmarks to center the cap on the person's head. In the forward to backward direction, we use the point between the eyes and that bump on the back of your head, which is called the inion. In the left-right direction, we use the midpoint between the two ears. One thing you can see here is that putting on the cap is an iterative process where we measure, adjust the cap, and then measure again to make sure that we're centered. Again, the major goal here is to make sure that everybody's electrode cap is on the same relative place of their head. Once the electrode cap is on, we put a chin strap on in order to make sure that the cap doesn't slide around. And on the right here, you can see that each of the electrodes are currently showing a red light. This red light indicates to us that the electrodes have very high impedance. In this case, we haven't put any of the gel in the cap yet, so they should all show red. 
In the next video, you'll see us filling each of these electrodes with some of the conductive gel. So in this video, we'll show you what it's like to actually fill the electrodes. So you can see that we're using the syringes that are filled with some of the electroconductive gel. And the first thing we do, that swirling motion, is to get the hair out of the way. We put a little bit of gel in there, and then you see that the electrode turns green. Here again, get the hair out of the way and establish contact with the skin. And you can see that once we put the gel in, the electrode turns green. This is obviously easier to do with two people. It goes much faster. Uh, and some of these electrodes are easier to fill than others. And that's just because of uh, the shape of the head at that point in time and the likelihood that there's hair there. Once the electrodes in the cap are filled, we go ahead and put on an electrode to measure eye movements. In this setup, we only have one additional eye channel, and it's placed just below the eye to measure vertical eye movements and blinks. We begin by cleaning the skin using a little bit of rubbing alcohol and a cotton swab. And using the stickers that we mentioned earlier, the electrode is then placed underneath the eye and filled with a conductive gel. Once this is done, you can see that the participant is ready to go. All of the electrodes are green, and we would go ahead at this point in time and transport them to the experiment room. Here you can see the participant sitting in the experiment room just before the experiment. We plug the electrode cap into some amplifiers that are battery powered. And the reason why we do that is because the signal, as noted before, is very, very small. Also shown here is the button box the person will be using. In this case, they simply have to hit a left or a right button, and you'll see the task they're going to perform in just a second. In this video, you'll see an experiment in progress. I, as the experimenter, am sitting on the right and am looking at three monitors. On the right is the display screen showing what the participant is seeing. In this particular task, the flanker task, they're responding with a left and right button press according to the direction of the middle arrows. You'll also notice those two little dashes. Those are indicators to the subject that they can blink at that point in time. I'm also watching the screen on the left here, which is the raw EEG signal being recorded. And there I'm looking for things like artifacts due to eye blinks or electrode channels going messy. In the middle, I have a video of the participant themselves as they're doing the task. In this video, you'll see raw EEG signal being recorded. And I want to, what I want you to look at is down here on the bottom. These codes right here are the event codes that we are sending to the EEG recording device that indicate what the participant is doing. The first event code corresponds to the presentation of the stimulus. The second event code to the button press that the person is doing. And the third event code to the eye blink. So this would be going on continuously, and if you watch the video on how to analyze EEG data, you'll see later on how we use these event codes. In this video, you'll see some of the artifacts that we typically see in an experiment, and these are things that we want to avoid during points of interest. Here you see some eye blinks, and you can see that it's a massive deflection that is substantially larger than the actual EEG signal that we're recording. As I said before, we introduce moments in time when people can blink, so they're not doing it during the task. Here are examples of horizontal eye movements, left and right. Uh, these are things that are also much larger than the signal. And here you can see muscle artifact from the participant clenching their jaw. Again, the signal here is much, much stronger than anything that we're actually interested in from the brain. After the experiment, we take the participant out of the room, and then we debrief them as to the purpose of the study. Finally, we need to make sure to clean all of the equipment uh, to get it ready for the next study. And so here you can see me using a toothbrush with a little bit of soapy water to clean out the electrode gel. 
That, in a nutshell, is how to run an EEG experiment. Thanks to Katie Cronin and Diana Dimitrova for helping me make this video, and thanks to the Max Planck Institute for Psycholinguistics, where this footage was taken.